So welcome to lesson 11, the thin lens and magnification equations. We're gonna be spending the next two days going over this lesson and the subsequent information that will be found in it. This is the most math heavy component of this unit. So please pay special attention to your calculations while you are doing them. This directly ties into your problem set that you will be doing for us as your final assessment. And so it behooves you to Take good notes, uh, fill in the notes that pr were provided online and ask questions if you have them. So when looking at what the thin lens equation is, we've, we've kind of already practiced determining the location and characteristics of an image using the SALT method, but we can also predict these characteristics algebraically using our mathematical equation, specifically the thin lens equation. Uh, so there's some terminologies that I wanna go over with you before we go into more detail. Uh, D0 or D0 is distance of the object, so DO you could also call it. DI looks at the distance of the image. Both of those are from the optical center. So if you're not sure what those terminologies mean, go back to your original notes with regards to lens and mirrors and determine what optical center is. HO, height of the object. HI, height of the image. And then F, which I'll highlight in a different color, is our focal length of the lens, the distance from the optical center to the principal focus. So distance from optical center to principal focus. So note that the focal length F is the same distance whether it goes for F or F prime. This is very important. This means that the focal length will always be the same regardless of which side of it is on the lens. Okay, so we've looked at how to determine the location of an image using our ray diagrams. Now we can use this equation. So let's take a look at this equation. This is one over DO plus one over DI is equal to one over F. So this is the thin lens equation and this is the equation that we will utilize to determine the distance of the object, distance of the image, as well as other aspects. But we'll come to some of those later. So there are a couple of rules that we need to go over before we move forward. The first is that when using the thin lens equation, the object's distance, or DO, is always going to be positive, always going to be positive. This is very important because it will allow for us to properly calculate the rest of the information. Image distances are also positive, but only if it is a real image on the opposite side of the lens of the object, and it's negative for virtual images. This will be tricky for some of you to remember. Uh, the more practice you put into it, though, and the more you check your work, the better off you will be in determining when it will be positive for the distance of the image or when it will be negative, okay? And then lastly, uh, the focal length F is positive for converging. And as you guessed it, it will be negative for diverging. So again, just some rules that you need to remember uh, in order to properly utilize the thin lens equation. Again, the more you practice this, the more better you will get. The most important thing also I would say for this is if for those of you who are having trouble remembering these rules, uh, take like a snippet of it or type them out or whatever it is, write them down somewhere and just like rip it out of your notebook or write it on a sticky note and keep those three rules there with you all the time. Because as you move through this unit and we finish it, this is kind of going to be the with along with the rules for drawing ray diagrams, these three rules with regards to the thin lens equation are kind of gonna be your, your go-to information. So let's take a look at some practice questions. I've already done quite a bit of them in your notes, but I wanna take the time to go over them with you in person. We'll do one example, and then I will do the last example on this sheet and then I will kind of let you either fill in the notes or try some of them on your own. So we have an object that is 25 centimeters away from a lens that produces a focused image on a film 15 centimeters away. What is the focal length of the converging lens? So there's a couple of important pieces of information here. We have an object is 25 centimeters away from the lens. It produces a focused image on a film 15 centimeters away and we're looking for the focal length of the converging lens. So when we look at what's given, we have the distance of the image as well as the distance of the object. We want to try to figure out or would require to figure out the focal length. So here we can utilize our thin lens equation of one over DO plus one over DI is equal to one over F. 
So to carry out that equation, we would just substitute our known values in for the equation, solve using our fraction methods and abilities. And I, if you take note here, folks, I am not using uh, a calculator just to push a couple of buttons. I'm solving it with fractions. I'm reducing and finding common denominators. And then I am solving for F algebraically. And then I finally do round at the end of the day to 9.4 centimeters. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. We'll do the bottom example because it is the trickiest one. Oops. And I'll just zoom out a little to clear it up a touch. So when we look at this equation, it's really important that you remember those three rules. Again, I, I don't want to hark back to them too often, but really and truly you should have them written down somewhere for your utilization. So a normal human eye has a focal length of about 2.3 centimeters. If you look at the tip of a pencil, 55.3 centimeters from your eye, how far is the image from the lens of your eye? So again, we have some crucial information here. The first is that we know that the focal length is 2.3 centimeters. We also know that the object is placed 55.3 centimeters away. And we're trying to find the distance of the image. Again, we have all the necessary information to utilize the equation 1 over D, DO plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over F. So we can rearrange the equation. Oops. We can rearrange the equation to solve for 1 over DI. And then we can solve moving forward there by substituting and solving. Now, in this question, I use decimal numbers just because uh, we were given decimal numbers in the question. That's perfectly fine. At the end of the day, I'm not really going to be too much of a stickler for this online as I would be in day school because we would spend way more time for this. But ultimately, if I give you decimals, you can solve with decimals in your calculator. If I give you whole numbers, I want to see it solved with fractions and that way. Uh, so ultimately, we get the distance of the image with a rounded number is 2.4 centimeters from the lens. Okay, I want to also talk about the magnification equation just because we can get this all done and dusted in one shot. Again, just like our thin lens equation, there's going to be a couple of rules that we need to understand and utilize. And the magnification equation helps us to determine the size of the object and the image. We're really trying to determine that magnification of the lens, how big or how small does the image appear as a result of the lens's ability to distort and refract that light? So we can solve for the magnification algebraically rather than measuring this on our ray diagrams. This allows for a more accurate result and a more replica rec replicatable result. <laughs> so the magnification equation is M is equal to height of the image over height of the object, which is also equal to negative distance of the image over distance of the object. And I, you can separate them into two separate equations, or you can set them to equal each other. It really matters what you're trying to solve for in this equation. So again, those four rules. Let's talk about these four rules with regards to magnification. So the first one, the object distance is always going to be positive. Oh, that's familiar. The object distance, or DO, will always be positive. The image distance are positive for real image, opposite side of the lens from the object, in brackets, and negative for virtual images. Again, same concepts applying here. One's going to be positive for real images. One's going to be negative for virtual images. The third rule, if the image or object is above, this is the caveat, if it's above the principal axis, HI and HO are positive, which we knew that already, right? That positive axis along X. And they are negative when measured below the principal axis. And then lastly, magnification will be positive if the image is upright and negative if the image is inverted. These last two rules are kind of self-explanatory because it's just looking at the plane of orientation in, a, in an X and Y Cartesian plane. If it's above that X axis, it will be positive. If it's below, it will be negative. And then same thing with regards to the upright positive, negative is inverted. Okay, so we have a summary of some of these aspects with regards to the uh, positive and negative values in the conversions for lenses as well as for magnifications. This chart, honest to goodness, because we're not doing a test, you can kind of ignore that, that sentiment there. But really and truly, this chart is going to be like the best thing on the planet for you. So I would prefer 
that you write out all the different rules for magnification and for thin lens equation. And then once you write them out once or twice, then you can start using this chart with regards to how to help you solve some of these problems. And I have this note here, double check that answers are reasonable. You will know if it's reasonable based off of how you understand how lens refraction or reflection works. So you really need to have a good understanding of that. Okay, so let's do one example and then I can open the floor to questions. So we have, I'll just unhighlight that stuff. I thought I did that earlier, my apologies. So we have a toy of height 8.4 centimeters is balanced in front of a converging lens. So we have a toy that's 8.4 centimeters in height is balanced in front of a converging lens. An inverted real image of height 23 centimeters is noticed on the other side of the lens. What is the magnification of the lens? So here we're trying to find the magnification with a bunch of given information. So what is given? Well, we have the height of the object, which is 8.4 centimeters in front of a converging lens. We have height of the image, which is inverted. So we know that it's going to be minus 23 centimeters, because if we refer, refer back to that handy chart, any object height that is in, or any object that is inverted with regards to its image will produce a negative height. And then we're trying to find our magnification. So we have height of the object and height of the image. And when we think about what our equation actually is, we don't need the component of the distance of the image and distance of the object. So we can just go right ahead and ignore that because at the end of the day, we only need to solve for M. And there's two different ways with which we can do that, using the ratio of height of the object over height of the image or the ratio of distance of the object over distance of the image. So let's take a look at how we can solve that, and we just plug our values in. And we see here that this will be a unitless calculation because the centimeters component cancels out. And what we're left with is since the lens has a magnification of minus 2.7 times, that is our magnification. All right, folks, that's it for the lesson. If you have questions, please post them in the document or come to office hours and ask.